Hitting 1 million on YouTube has always been a big thing. It's just one of the ways that creators show, hey mom, I made it, and cement their presence and influence online for their flourishing careers to come. So imagine being the first YouTuber to ever hit that beautiful one in six zeros and receive the first ever golden play button. Well, that legacy is held by the incredible acting, filming, and scripting of Fred. Hello gorgeous and welcome back or welcome to your first video where I drag you all along for one of my classic brain adventures. <laughs> If you don't know me, hi, hello, I'm JJ. I love learning and for some reason I have an endless fascination with social media history, specifically YouTube history. And for some reason the other day I was wondering who was the first ever YouTuber to hit a million followers? Found out it was Fred. My mind was blown and thus birthed this video. So buckle up buttercup because we are in for a weird ride as we outline what if Fred never posted to YouTube. That's a different series. This one is just strictly curiosity killed the cat, but satisfaction brought it back. Hey, it's Fred! What's up, Homer G? Fred to me is YouTube's fever dream, and I don't think there's a more accurate way to sum it up because his career, his online legacy, is one of the oddest series of dominoes I've ever witnessed. That at times I'm just sitting there thinking, okay, this is peak odd for this character. This character can no longer surprise me. Then he's on iCarly, then he's on Hannah Montana acting beside Miley Cyrus, whose concert he went to only a few years earlier as a screaming fan. Then he has music, he has plushies, he has a board game, then he has a movie, then a sequel, then a trilogy, then a TV show, and John Cena is his dad. And in the behind the scenes footage, John Cena is actually praising Lucas and his character for how he has utilized the power of the internet. What? All of these people shitting all over the hype house for getting a Netflix series, for the D'Amelios getting a TV show, and for those TikTokers getting that doctor show, whatever it was. Just remember, he walked so that they could run. John, I'm not stalking BTS Cena, is Fred's dad. But how is it that this abrasive six-year-old character created by Lucas Cruikshank won over the YouTube masses enough in April of 2009 to be the most subscribed to YouTuber to hit 1 million subscribers first and receive the first ever golden play button? Especially when you consider that in 2009, we had creators like Smosh, Ryan Higa, Miranda Sings, The Vlog Bros, and many more, all posting with decent fan bases behind them. Smosh and Ryan Higa actually being the most subscribed to channels at times before and after Fred, and both channels were seen as far less aggravating and far less annoying than Fred. And how is it that since carving his name permanently in the history of YouTube, has Lucas faded from the public's mind? The origins of Fred actually wasn't on the official Fred channel. Lucas and his cousins co-owned the channel JKL Productions, and from my understanding, the L stood for Lucas. The first video, Hannah Montana, was posted to the channel June 12th of 2006, where the cousins danced to the best of both worlds. Incredibly innocent family fun, and it was clear that Lucas was going to be a fashion icon in his online career with the red board short blue tie-dyed t-shirt combo. I absolutely love the particular flavor of awful that was Naughty's fashion. The channel I actually find quite nostalgic even though I've never watched JKL Productions until I researched for this video and I think it's because I have an incredibly similar relationship to my cousins. My cousins and I actually saw each other quite frequently and we were constantly having dance-offs in the pool, on the trampoline with the alpacas, creating skits, or acting out a scene from High School Musical where my cousin Nat would always have to be Gabriella, my cousin Bree would always have to be Troy, and I was always Ryan. <laughs> The only difference seems to be that my cousins and I didn't always film our fun, and if we did film it once in a while, it definitely wasn't going on YouTube. Whereas Lucas and his cousins definitely did, and in doing so, it allowed Lucas to experiment with characters. He would seemingly be hit with some dose of inspiration or motivation, then film and edit as a specific character until he unknowingly struck gold. He created, filmed, and uploaded Fred on Halloween. This video. I didn't realize how deeply I had it locked away in my mind because after re-watching it for the first time in over a decade, I realized that I had a concerning amount of this video memorized. Yeah, whoa, whoa. Just, I remembered every single word. Then I watched more early day uploads of Fred and I realized, oh, 
I wasn't just an every now and then watcher of Fred. I must have been an active watcher of Fred because I recognized every single scene in at least 80% of those videos as soon as they started playing. There's nothing wrong with this, of course. I just can't help but think what more information, important information could have been stored in my hard drive if Fred wasn't taking up crucial legs. Either way, Fred on Halloween was an absolute hit and the subscribers to JKL Productions loved him enough that seemingly the character was brought back a few more times to the channel until the demand was just so high that Lucas started posting to the Fred channel. The channel was launched in 2005, but it wasn't until later that Lucas started posting almost weekly to the channel as Fred, starting with the re-uploaded classic of Fred on Halloween that today has over 18 million views. Some of the upload date timeline does get quite hard to track as a lot of the Fred content on the Fred YouTube channel has been re-uploaded. But according to the Fred Figglehorn fandom page, which isn't a great source, I understand, but it's really all we have for this. The original upload date for Fred on Halloween was October 30th, 2006. But of course, as I've already specified, was re-uploaded May 1st of 2008. After watching watching an unhealthy amount of Fred content to research for this video that I of course was not going to be making my friend Savannah sit through. Then eventually because of this research, stumbling across Quentin Review's video analyzing the lore of Fred Figglehorn, which I didn't know how much I needed this video in my life. And it's weird how much of my brain was satisfied by that video. I didn't realize how much I was missing in life until I found that video. But after investing so much of my time in all of this, I think I've been able to better figure out how it is that Fred became the first channel to hit 1 million followers. Because even though credit where credit is due, Lucas, you did so good baby cakes, I am so proud of you. Fred is still nonetheless YouTube's fever dream in my personal opinion. And with all of this YouTube royalty and OGs that we know and love today, and with the caliber of content we have been exposed to over the years, it's still hard for me to sit here and not think Fred. Fred Figglehorn was the first YouTuber to hit 1 million followers first. Out of everyone out there, Fred. It just wouldn't have been my first guess. My first guess was Smosh followed by Ray William Johnson. And there is quite a few important factors that I think contribute to this odd breakout success story that is Lucas's character Fred. Because until I really dove into the research for this video and the history and evolution of Fred and his content, I only remembered how annoying he was, how abrasive he was, and just how awful the content was. I remember how much Fred and therefore Lucas was made fun of, both in comment sections but also just in casual conversation with my friends at school. But that's just some of the beauty and intelligence of Lucas and I'm not too sure if a 13 year old Lucas really understood the power that he was manipulating when he was posting because the YouTube algorithm was still in its baby stages. It was still trying to work itself out. The only way that it could gauge engagement was views and comments and it didn't matter if people were enjoying this content or hating this content because views were still views and comments were still comments. So those people that were hate watching Fred and actively commenting that hate, you helped pave the way for Fred and his success. With so much hate for this character, there is also so much fascination for this character because people want to try and figure out what all of the fuss is about, no matter if it's good fuss or bad fuss. But also Fred was some people's guilty pleasure. From my personal experience, you never wanted to actively admit that you enjoyed the content, but for some reason, your brain was betraying you because hot diggity damn, you couldn't get enough of that screaming little brat. And I think it genuinely comes down to an observation that Quentin Reviews highlighted in their analysis of the Fred Figglehorn more being that Fred is a dark comedy. And from the brain of a 13 year old, it's not a bad one either. If you look strictly at how the plot is delivered and how information about Fred and other characters is delivered, there is weirdly an intelligent balance of dark concepts and six year old innocence with the lack of development of the frontal cortex. Fred as a character is severely neglected by his poor alcoholic mother that works the streets. His father is absent and probably in prison from some of the information given to us throughout the Fred Figglehorn Law, and Fred is a six-year-old boy with a very vivid imagination that has quite a lot of issues when it comes to regulating his emotions. The plot and concept of Fred on Halloween is literally his mum leaves him at home alone so that she can go out partying and drinking till 4 a.m. as her six-year-old son sits at home all night by himself because he can't go trick-or-treating without her. Fred at home alone passes the time by vlogging his night, breaking his PlayStation out of anger, being scared because of the things in the background of the screen, and singing for four hours tick tock. She's gonna be home soon, tick tock. 
She's gonna be home soon. Yeah, whoa, whoa. Just for his mother to come back at 4 a.m. drunk and then have a dance party with her child. From the information in this video, Fred didn't eat dinner or shower or do anything to take care of himself because he is six. Like that as a plot is incredibly concerning and just sad. It is a plot for a Dr. Phil episode, let's be honest. But the way that this plot is delivered with this Fred flair of childhood innocence, abrasive screeching, purposeful, awful singing and nonsensical breathing and rambling. And with the latest and greatest developments of pitch shifting technology, this possibly uncomfortable and concerning plotline in other hands became social media legacy. Legitimately, it would take someone very little effort to write a thesis arguing that the complexities of YouTube's thread make it the best online dark comedy of all time. Throw in some fancy words and I am reading it 1000%. I would pay good, legitimate money to read an academic article about the complexities of Fred, making it the best online dark comedy of all time. Look, maybe it's all of the mental health disorders that everyone born in the 1990s onwards have that makes dark comedy so appealing, but whatever it is, dissecting the original Fred videos, I think I understand how it is that Fred the character and Fred the channel became the most subscribed to person on YouTube for a reign of 318 days back in 2009. And of course, because of this, become the first creator to ever reach 1 million followers and receive that golden play button. Because if Sav and my math is correct, then that means that Lucas was able to engage 0.99% of YouTube's overall users to subscribe to his content. Lucas's content as Fred was so entertaining, so engaging to the YouTube masses that almost 1% of YouTube's overall users subscribe to his content. Which percentage wise may not seem like much, but that is an insane achievement, especially when you consider that once again, if Sav and my math is correct, and comparing to the amount of users on YouTube in 2021, that is an inflation rate of 2,473.81%. And a creator only needs to engage 0.038% of YouTube's overall 2.6 billion users to subscribe to their content. Of course, this is still a lot easier said than done, but it is still significantly easier to reach that milestone these days than back in April of 2009. Hitting this milestone and having this piece of YouTube legacy attached to you forever was really just the beginning for Lucas and for Fred. Because already traditional media was starting to see the appeal of social media creators and how to utilize their popularity in their own productions. The people behind iCarly saw this potential first, writing Lucas and his character Fred Figglehorn into the series for the single episode I Meet Fred aired February 16th, 2009 where Lucas played a fellow online content creator who played a character of Fred. So incredibly similar to his actual life, but Lucas wasn't playing Lucas when Lucas wasn't playing Fred on iCarly. Are we following? <laughs> The plot of the episode was actually quite funny to me on paper when you consider how accurately it portrayed 2018 to now's social media. Because iCarly's cameraman Freddy says on camera that he isn't the biggest fan of Fred. And then Fred uploads a goodbye video because of this. iCarly and Freddy are harassed for killing Fred and then go to meet with iLucas to smooth things out in order to save their show. Not knowing that iLucas manipulated Freddy's words and the situation to create drama and therefore publicity for himself and iCarly making both more popular and trending online. That classic tale of any publicity is good publicity that has been adapted by many of our online friends. Only two months after this cameo and YouTube's Fred is the first to hit 1 million followers. 2009 was a busy, busy year for Fred and therefore Lucas because he had his second cameo in Hannah Montana December 6th where he played voice actor Kyle McIntyre. And also in 2009, according to the fandom page, which once again is not the best source, but it's really all we have, fans could also purchase the Fred Mayday Diet game, the Fred Slumber Party game, and the Fred Card game, as well as four catchphrase Fred plushies, a talking pillow, shirts, buttons, stickers, magnets, a talking pen, keychains, and other miscellaneous goodies. And just when you think here, here is where Fred peaks. No, no, because September 18th of 2010, Fred the movie was released with Oscar worthy performances from Lucas Crockshank, Jeanette McCurdy, Pixie Lott, and John Cena. The IMDb page has a very generous two out of 10 star rating. And really this seems to be the beginning of the end for Fred. Some of this insight I have is thanks to Quintum Review's comprehensive analysis of Fred Figglehorn as a piece of online history rather than a time capsule of cringe. Because this analysis articulated the inability to make Fred entirely transferable to traditional media. Because because we are stuck with only a few options. Getting a younger child actor to play the part of Fred, which isn't really going to work because 
Lucas is Fred, Fred is Lucas, and the popularity is associated with Lucas playing Fred, so it, it's just not gonna work. Lucas, a 16 year old at the time of filming Fred the movie, interacting with a bunch of child actors, one of which playing the part of Judy, who is a character that a six-year-old Fred canonically stalks, or aging up the character of Fred to closer match Lucas. And this is the option that Nickelodeon went with, and I'm not really surprised. But in aging up Fred, writers and producers had to mature Fred as well. Otherwise, you have a 16-year-old playing a 15-year-old with a mental capacity of a six-year-old that is severely neglected by his mother. So seemingly some of this dark humor gold that Lucas struck at 13 started to dwindle with Fred the movie, its sequel Fred 2 Night of the Living Fred released in 2011, its completed trilogy with Fred 3 Camp Fred released in 2012, and then Fred the show that concluded its release in August of 2012. With Lucas and Nickelodeon eventually parting ways after the release of his second Nickelodeon show Marvin Marvin and any crossovers with any of the Lucas characters in Nickelodeon. There's probably an element of that pesky curse too much of a good thing, but in a up Fred and therefore having to mature Fred as well, otherwise we're getting into some really uncomfortable territory. It's this whole suspension of disbelief issue. When you ask your audience to suspend their disbelief too much, then it pulls them out of the adventure. I understand that Fred isn't a cinematic masterpiece, but as a character and within Fred Productions, it still utilizes the same tools to create the content. Some of the odd beauty of OG Fred was that people could legitimately believe that Fred was a real person, or at the very least forget for a hot second that Fred wasn't a real person. Simply because it doesn't suspend our disbelief too much, but compared with Nickelodeon's Fred, that doesn't exist. We know that it is 100% a character because we have to suspend our disbelief so freaking much. A 15 year old that is that vocal about being severely neglected, that has that many anger management issues, who is having quite vivid hallucinations on a regular occasion, is apparently a love interest magnet, not to mention the teacher is a vampire thing. There is just a lot of suspension with very little reward and comedy that feels so close to being Fred comedy, yet so far at the same time. Just because it's got John the Rock Cena doesn't mean it's gonna be good. But it wasn't just the writers and producers that were draining the character of every ounce of dopamine down to the very last drop, or the detached comedy of Teen Fred that slowly faded the spotlight shining down on Fred. It was also Lucas seemingly losing the motivation for Fred. Lucas actually started a second YouTube channel back in 2005, according to the YouTube channels about section, but only started posting to it January 4th of 2009 with the video, Welcome to my YouTube channel, where he simply explains he wants to do other stuff than just Fred, and that after so many years of doing the same character, it gets a bit boring. And behind the scenes of Fred the movie, he is interviewed expressing that he doesn't want to be playing the character into his 20s. Which, fair, characters lose their steam, characters lose their spark, characters lose their interest, even from the people behind the character. And we all know that I know that concept far too intimately. And I just realized a weird sense of empathy that I have for Lucas just on a far smaller scale. That is an existential crisis I will deal with later. But also I just don't see the appeal in playing a character that was originally six years old that's been aged up to 15 years old that has a different style of comedy into my 20s being an enjoyable experience no matter how much I was getting paid. And on top of all of that, Lucas has expressed on more than one occasion that he had dreams of becoming an actor. Being typecast is quite a popular fear and for very good reason because if you can't show versatility in your acting repertoire, then you will potentially ruin crucial opportunities for yourself until no one gives a damn about you and then it's just bye-bye career. But there is an increased level of I fucked up when your typecast is Fred instead of the rom-com dude. Which is why I personally see Fred the movie as the beginning of the end of Fred because this is where Fred was adapted for new media, but also this is where the Fred typecast for Lucas really began. And I say typecast because from the very, very brief amount of Marvin Marvin content I could tolerate, it's just Nickelodeon Fred adjacent. Then after all of this part of the fever dream, just for some extra cheeky context, for the first time in two-ish years, a video is posted to the YouTube channel Fred, August 1st, 2014, called Fred is Back, a 23 second video that announces this comeback. Then over the next few weeks, a multi-channel story arc unfolds where a new Fred starts posting almost exact frame-for-frame -frame copies of previous Fred videos 
with a serial corporation running the show, only for it to be revealed that actually Fred has been kidnapped by the serial company. Lucas then flies to Korea to save Fred, then the original owner of the custom Fred URL, Claudio, another character of Lucas's invented years ago that actually ties into real life events, actually turns out to be behind the whole entire thing working with the serial company just for Fred to be freed and Lucas to say goodbye to him. The video Hey It's Fred was posted August 29th, 2014, where Lucas announces that he is opening up the channel for others to post on because we are all Fred. No. Which is why for the next year, a bunch of content was posted to the Fred channel that had absolutely nothing to do with the original Fred content, including viral Jake Paul series In Your Face and kids asking random adults where babies come from. The YouTube channel Fred was officially abandoned in July of 2015 to become nothing more than just YouTube legacy. And I'm not gonna lie, it was weirdly kind of sad to see that the first channel that hit a million followers has since been abandoned. Even if it was Fred, it weirdly just gave me a few little, oh, that, that sucks kind of emotions. But just because the Fred YouTube channel has been abandoned doesn't mean that Lucas has abandoned YouTube. Lucas has continued posting to his second YouTube channel, Lucas, over the years and has collaborated on other YouTube channels as well. Most frequently, his brother's YouTube channel, Jacob Crockshank, and also has a podcast with his brother, Jacob, called Lucas and Jacob The Bro Show, where video footage is uploaded to a YouTube channel as well. Typically, the way to compare success rates online is with subscribers. And if that was the only parameter we were going to go with, then Lucas is miles ahead of Fred with 3.28 million subscribers. But of course there is other parameters that we could use to measure the success rate, but so many of them are subjective. But regardless, Lucas is active here and has evolved through a selection of contents over the years until he has come to now, where his content is primarily commentary or reaction based with over 287 million views across his channel. And Lucas seems to be living his best life in all honesty. Of course, this is just a little glimpse into his life that he has given us with this content, but from where I'm sitting, he seems to be doing pretty well. He's moved on from the character of Fred, which is something he expressed that he wanted to do before he was 20. Even though there has been a brief revamp on Lucas's channel with adult Fred that has since been deleted and Lucas bringing the comedic stylings of Fred to the next generation on TikTok. Apart from these exceptions, he has moved on from the character of Fred and is making the content that he wants to be making from what I can tell, because I'm guessing he wouldn't be making the content if he didn't want to be making the content. Like if he was the kind of person to make content that he didn't want to make simply because it was going to get him paid, then Fred would have had more than just a few simple revamps. We would have had Fred 4 and Kingdom of the Crystal Skull. But also just the way that he's talked about his Fred and Nickelodeon career publicly when reacting to the content for his Lucas YouTube channel. The humor at times is a bit dark, dank, cringy, but it's all said in a way that I think is pretty entertaining and healthy. There just seems to be this effortless fun when it comes to Lucas reacting to his Fred content or Marvin Marvin content and an effortless removal of himself from the character. Watching Lucas watch Fred content for the first time in years, it's two completely different people. Unsurprisingly, because people grow and people change. But even though you know that it's Lucas reacting to his former self, it still doesn't 100% feel like it is Lucas reacting to his former self, even though it is exactly that. Some of that is just possibly that Lucas doesn't remember filming some of the Fred videos. In one of his reactions, he jokes that when you're screaming like that, maybe your mind just blacks out because it's just not in his memory. So if Lucas doesn't have that first person experience of Fred anymore locked away in his mind, does Fred truly exist anymore? Regardless of what it specifically is that makes Lucas reacting to his former self play Fred not feel like it is Lucas reacting to his former self play Fred and it's just Lucas reacting to a person who is called Fred, he isn't signed to Nickelodeon anymore. He isn't making Fred content anymore. And he just seems to be doing well. And I think that's possibly a key reason why I find this so fucking fascinating. Because ultimately Fred is gone. The character that is Fred no longer exists. His memory of course does with all of the media produced and posted over the years, but the character doesn't. The character no longer exists, only parodies of the original Fred, even if it is just Lucas on TikTok. So having this weird disconnect for me personally with Fred and Lucas today is like, oh, you hold this milestone record? This man was the first person to reach 1 million followers on YouTube. Because even though it was Lucas that brought Fred to life and all of his hard work and efforts that made Fred wildly popular and profitable, it was Fred the character that was what people were drawn to. It was Fred that people subscribed to. Doesn't mean that people didn't or don't love Lucas. It just means that people really loved Fred and that was all that Lucas was showing the world for years. But also compared to how spoiled we are for high quality content and creators these days and for the last few years really, and how comparatively easier it is to reach 1 million followers on YouTube, I just wasn't expecting 
expecting it to be the historical truth that Fred was the first person to ever reach 1 million followers on YouTube. The legacy that is Fred Figglehorn is that this severely neglected six-year-old with anger issues that regularly stalks his neighbor Judy, whose incarcerated dad is possibly John Figglehorn Cena, whose alcoholic mother works the streets, who is actually a 13-year-old boy who loves pitch shifting technology, is the first person ever to reach 1 million subscribers on YouTube and receive the golden play button, who these days doesn't even remember filming some of the content that led to this online legacy. How are we? How are we all doing? <laughs> Look, part of me is sorry, but also, you're welcome. <laughs> I don't even know how to explain how much fun I had researching for this video. I don't even know how to explain how satisfied I am with having this knowledge. This knowledge is going to achieve me nothing in life. <laughs> it's not going to benefit me, but I know that it's one of those things that I'm going to take to the grave with me. <laughs> like one of John Cena's first acting roles. I think maybe even the first mainstream acting role that wasn't WWE. I'm pretty sure it was Fred the movie. <laughs> I wasn't joking when I said fever dream, but please let me know all of your thoughts and opinions, even if your thought or opinion is, please never do this again, JJ. I, no. <laughs> Cease. And most importantly, desist. But also please let me know what you want me to talk about next. Let me know if there are any other brain adventures that you think that I would enjoy because I love filling all of the holes in my Swiss cheese brain. Also, once again, I'm so sorry that I didn't do a makeup look on camera. I just once again needed to cut myself some slack, give myself a cheeky break, but I did want to get this video out because I've, I've had way too much fun getting it all together for everyone. And now I get to edit it and I know that I'm going to be enjoying every single second. And of course, and most importantly, thank you so much for watching this video, especially if you made it to here because my content, she can be quite a bit lengthy and with four hours and 46 minutes worth of microphone footage, it's probably gonna be around the 38 minute mark. 35 if we're lucky. And your time is precious and I'm so grateful that you decided to donate some of it to me today. And I just hope that you are having a fantastic day, fantastic week, fantastic month, fantastic year. And I hope that you are doing as fantastic as always. Bye everyone.